Hello everyone, welcome to Edukemi's YouTube channel. I am Nanki Baveja once again in front of you with a new video where I will be discussing the importance of budget and economic survey for our UPSC aspirant. How these documents serve importance in the life of UPSC aspirant while they're preparing for the exam, while they're preparing for prelims or be it the mains or the interview. Now, before proceeding with the video for the day, if you wish to see more such videos or the videos like these, please hit the bell icon to stay updated with the what uh, new videos Edukemi is coming up with. And also, if you really like the video, please hit the like, share and subscribe button. Now, coming back to the video and the topic that we'll talk today is the importance. What importance does the budget and economic survey hold when it comes to the preparation for the UPSC exam and not just UPSC exam, be it any exam, any government or competitive exam you talk about. These two documents are very important because they provide you with, you, with the various schemes and programs with the important figures and data which could be asked in a way or the other in the various exams. So now what happens is Everyone knows that February is the month where both of these documents are released and now once they are released, students are well acquainted with the fact that this is very important then they have to read it. Ye bhi pata hota hai ki padna hai ye document and is very important and especially I'm talking about the UPSC aspirants here. Every UPSC aspirant knows that budget and economic survey is very important as far as preparation for the exam is considered. But now, what do you have to study? How do you have to study? This is not Like most of the students that I talk about, they are really dazed and confused where to focus on, what to read, what to read and what to miss. Because these two documents are so bulky and voluminous in nature that the students end up leaving these two documents. And what they do is they miss out on the on the extra edge or extra marks that they can score while reading these two documents. So it is not that you have to read these documents from cover to cover. You just have to focus on the key areas, on the important themes or on the important topics and how one gets to know that what are the areas where the student has to focus on and that is what we will discuss today. That is where we are here for to tell you ki kis tarike se padna hai, pura nahi padna hai, hard work nahi karna hai, what we have to do is the smart work that we have to do. So let us start, let us discuss step by step as to how this document is important, what all this document provides to a UPSC aspirant when they are preparing for their exam. So the first thing, first thing that a student gets to know from this document is the theme, the themes where they should focus on. Because from these themes only, the questions for mains exams are framed. I'm trying to explain all of these with the help of example. So in order to reinforce into your minds that the importance of these themes is too much when it comes when it when we talk about the mains exams. So this chapter is from the economic survey, economic survey for 2021-22. And this is the chapter one over here, as you can read and look at what the chapter one provide. It is, it talks about saving lives and livelihoods. But what does the chapter provides is that it talks about, that it talks about the V-shaped recovery of the Indian economy. So as you know that multiple waves of pandemic or novel coronavirus has struck the, co the country badly. And from last two years, economists have been talking about or have been debating about what shape the Indian growth or Indian recovery is taking, whether it is a K-shaped recovery or whether it is a V-shaped recovery. So in order to get a clarity as to what government budgeting, government, bud government is thinking about the shape of recovery, you have to refer to the authentic documents, to the legitimate documents. And where do you get this information is 
the authentic information is provided to you in the economic survey that is being published and that is what you have to look for what the government actually thinks about the recovery of the economy and not what economists Tom, Dick and Harry think about it. Obviously, their opinion is important to form an overall or general opinion. But when you have to write about or write the answer, substantiate the points, tab kya dekhna, what you have to refer to is what the government documents are talking about the shape of recovery. And if you see this was the cover page of economic survey of 2021-22 and it has or it is depicting v-shaped recovery and hence a question a question was directly asked in the mains 2021 which was held in january this year that do you agree that indian economy has recently experienced v-shaped recovery directly question pooch li agar aap dekh rahe and there was a chapter that is chapter one which talked about which is actually telling that the shape of recovery has been v-shaped for indian economy so any themes ko pakadna hai hume any themes ko any chapters ko padna hai humko jab hum economic survey pad rahe hai forget about the facts and figures in the one go or the first reading what you have to see the broad themes that the economic survey is talking about and mind it, it is not necessary for just the GS paper 3 when we talk about the economy section of it. I will take another example to substantiate how the questions or the themes from economic survey is helpful in framing or answering the question for GS paper 1 when we talk about Indian society. Now this is again from economic survey. And the economic survey was actually talking about how the change is taking place in the nature of work of Indian economy. Earlier, when we talk about the sectors of labor in the Indian economy, how do we use to uh, differentiate or bifurcate is that? Ek ho gaya formal segment and the other one is informal sector. This is another sector which the government is looking forward to include in the economy is the gig in the platform workers which emerged with the platforms like Ola and Uber coming in, urban company, the workers or the people, employees working for them are known as gig workers or the platform workers. Now the economic survey actually addressed the issue related to gig workers and hence there was a question again directly GS paper 1 2021 in January examine the role of gig economy in the process of empowerment of women in India and this if you see again form the theme to study while we are reading the economic survey this is the way how you have to look at the document. What new the economic survey is offering you? Kya ek nai opinion, ek naya angle de raha hai, naya angle is new angle is being uh, given to you to form an opinion of the Indian economy. So it actually talked about that the nature of work is changing in Indian economy. And how? Because these two types of workers are coming in. And hence the directly a question. Now the people who were or the students who were well acquainted with this fact that the nature of work is changing and how it is changing, how it is addressing the problems of various sections of society, how it is leading to inclusive development, they would be in a position to attempt this question successfully and scoring definitely an edge over others by mentioning that the economic survey also talked about this. That is how you secure an extra edge over the others. When you tell the examiner or the copy checker that so and so was being referred to the economic or in the economic survey or any other document by the government, that is where you will secure an extra mark and get an edge over the others. So this is what you have to look for. Abhage chalte hai. Another example. Why I have taken so many examples to substantiate is that it gets concreted in your mind that you start inculcating these things and just not listen to this video for the heck of it ki dekh lete hai, naya video aya hai kya pata kuch pata chal jai? all of this all of these snippets taking out i have done just 
for you to realize how important it is for you to study these two documents and not just the importance of it, how to study it in the way, in a proper way, so as to fetch or reap benefits out of it is even more important than just reading the these two documents. So, again, let's go through this question. Now, this question talks about one of the intended objectives of the Union Budget 2017 and 18 is to transform, energize and clean India. This was a question in 2017 means. Kya bol raha hai question? It is talking about the objectives that the Union Budget 2017 had. The objective was to transform, energize and clean India. In the light of the statement, the examiner asked to analyze the measures proposed in the budget itself to achieve the objective. Ab jisne budget nahi padha ho to gaya kaam se. Because ab jab budget nahi padha, so how would the student know that what are the measures that have been prescribed in the budget to achieve this objective? Now, until unless you have not gone through the budget, you won't be, you will be just beating around the bush. And mind it, I'm telling you, you don't have any time to fool the examiner by beating around the bush because you have to be bang on point. Your point should be really crisp because there are two things. You have paucity of words and paucity of time. So, these are the 10 distinct themes to foster this broad, broad agenda. This is 2017 budget all talking about as to what steps or measures it was clearly mentioned in the 2017's budget as to how the government aims to achieve the objective or the intended objective. And this is what you have to look for. So till now I have given you two examples, sorry, three examples in all, two from the economic survey and one from the budget as to where you have to focus on. So for example, in 2021, there were six pillars of the budget. You should be in a position to know as to what these six pillars were and what did they actually meant. What was provided in those six pillars of the budget 2021. And now let's look forward to budget 2022. वहाँ पे क्या आता है, क्या वो pillars देते हैं, और they uh, they are providing again some or are they defining certain broad objective which the government wishes to achieve? You really need to be focused and sharp on those objectives. You really need to critically analyze those objectives, whether the government has the capacity to achieve those objectives or not, and that is how you have to streamline your preparation when we talk about preparing from these two bulky documents and that is what will make your preparation fun and otherwise what will happen is it will be like a book you have to just keep on reading and reading you won't be able to retain the information until unless you know where do you have to focus on so themes we have covered next is these documents also provide you important figures and data sets now why these Figures and data sets is important because questions are coming in prelims every year. At least one question is there which talks about trends in the various fiscal parameters. Now, what it could be, it could be the import or export figure, it could be uh, the composition of government budget, it could be the contribution of direct taxes to the GDP of the government or whether the indirect taxes contributes more or direct taxes. All of it, how would you know, how will you prepare for such questions coming in the exam? And this is the answer from this, this snippet I have taken from the highlights of budget. This pictograph highlights of budget 2021. Now, here also, if you see, you could see the V shape of recovery. So you should be in a position to analyze what these graphs are telling that V shape recovery or the growth is taking the form of V shape. Look at these indexes. You really need to know the inflation level in the country in last one year so that if a question comes 
from the trends on fiscal parameters, you are able to attempt it successfully. Next is look at this question. Now, what does this question say is most of India's external debt is owned by the government entities. And the next statement is all of India's external debt is denominated in US dollar. Guess the pata chalega ki external debt mein government entities ka contribution kitana hai? By seeing these graphs. Jab tak inko nahi dekhoge graphs for pie chart ko, you won't be able to attempt these questions. Ya to newspapers ko bhoat thoroughly padho. Even after that, there are certain questions or certain trends which the newspaper also fails to cover. And that is where the budget plus economic survey comes into picture. The importance of it, you really have to see the highlights. There's a whole document, 10-15 page ka document hota hai. 10-15 pages are there in that document which is entirely covered or uh, which entirely includes different graphs figures and pictographs you really have to pay attention to those pictographs or the graphs or the trends another example just look at this question uh, i think this is from 2017 or 18 prelims so it says that tax revenue as a percentage of gdp in india has steadily increased in the last decade tax revenue bhai increase ho gaya hai hamara gdp mein and how would you know that? And the next statement says that fiscal deficit as a percentage of GDP, India has steadily increased in the last decade. And how would you know this? Until unless you are not focusing on the graphs and the figures and the pie charts, you won't be able to attempt these questions. And mind it, there's a fight for single every single mark in the exam. So you really can't afford to miss such important documents that is being released. They hold importance for prelims, for mains and interview. How would you form an opinion about the growth rate of the country until, let's suppose a question is asked in the interview. While you're facing an interview, the question, the, either the, the panel asks you to substantiate why the Indian growth is not being termed as K-shaped and why it is termed as V-shaped. So you should be in a position to substantiate your answer with the uh, facts and figures. Or you will get it from the economic survey. So another area where you have to focus on is the graphs and the pie charts. Next is Schemes and programs, now this becomes very important for the prelims exam. See, there are so many schemes and programs which is very important and it is very difficult for any student to mug all of it, right? Because there's limitation. We are tired, we have to remember how much we have to remember. We have to remember the battle of Baksar, we have to remember the government of facts and figures, these schemes and programs. So when you have to prioritize in the order that which schemes and programs to focus first, so it is the one which is provided in the budget. So for those people who are appearing for prelims 2022, they really have to keep their eyes glued on the schemes and programs which will be announced in the budget 2022. They can't afford to miss to prepare the programs or the schemes which will be there in the budget so this actually gives you a hang of the schemes and programs which are or which forms importance for the upcoming prelims exam. Next thing that you have to focus on or with which can help you to um, actually add to your notes while you're preparing is the major trends or let's suppose these are the points to substantiate your answer. So for example, uh, they, uh, for example, if a question comes in mains exam that uh, elaborate upon the various sources of revenue for the government and critically uh, analyze whether it has changed or it has increased in the previous two years or due to the pandemic, what effect it has caused or it has caused on the exchequer of the government. So you really need to know from what are the various major sources of revenue for the government. 
So for example, if you see that corporate tax has uh, contributed 13% to the GDP, non-tax revenue formed almost like 6%, uh, then uh, GST has contributed 15% to the government's kitty. So, what are the points kya karenge, help karenge to address the question properly, to relate it with the contemporary issue or the contemporary events? Until unless you don't provide these examples in your answer, nahi milenge extra marks. And the moment you provide such points in your answer, you won't be able, you won't imagine or you won't be able to believe ki aapke marks kahan se kahan jayenge. The quality of your answer will increase and improve like anything and everything. So try picking such pictographs, such graph, pie charts and put it directly into your notes wherever you are preparing, howsoever you are preparing, whether you are maintaining in the pen and paper form or a digital form in your iPad or laptop, whatsoever it is, directly cut, copy, paste it from the budget and put it over there so that while you are preparing for your mains, you just go through them once and you get a hang of it or you know it as to what points to use where. Next is critique for the government actions. So the economic survey just do not provide points to substantiate your answer, but it also provides critical analysis of the government action. Now, if you see again, I have taken this snippet from 2021 economic survey, which actually talks about the relation between the debt and the growth rate. So Indian government was a view that that increase in the debt would also lead to growth. But economic survey has substantiated or clearly told that in India, growth definitely leads to debt sustainability, but the vice versa is not happening. So it actually directly provides you fodder to critically evaluate a government current physical parameters or situation. So when you are reading all of this, try to form an opinion with whatever these documents are providing. This will you, give you a holistic understanding of what is going, what action taken by the government has actually reaped benefits for the economy and what actions have actually pro proved to be detrimental. And all of it has been provided or is provided in the economic survey. So critique for government action is one such thing which you can actually get from the economic survey and last but not the least the last thing which you can reap out of or which you can take out of economic survey is these quotes quotes kahi bhi use kar sakte hain obviously we have to ratify this when it comes to uh, addressing our uh, essay paper but you can use these quotes like the quote on poverty which is there that is poverty is the parent of revolution and crime being uh, uh, this this quote was given by aristotle now these quotes can be used uh, in some way or the other while you are writing answer for mains for example you can use these quotes to introduce your answer or you can use it as a conclusion to your answer. So these quotes and phrases, the last thing that it can contribute despite and besides all of it, all of the data and points it was providing you. This also you can extract. This is how you can fully utilize the economic survey and budget, how, how it can add, how this is the way it is adding now. Uh, by the end of this video, I hope you are in a position to know as to where you have to focus on so that you don't get deviated. And I certainly hope that now that you read the budget and the economic survey, which is due to be laid on 1st of February, you will align your preparation with the parameters that I have told you. So all the best to all of you who are preparing for the exam, for the prelims that are coming up. And I wish that this video has added uh, to your knowledge as to how to or what importance does the budget and economic survey holds for a UPSC aspirant. All the best and have a good day.